Hello again. As we continue our online education success series, in this episode of the Explorations Learning Network, we'll be taking you through attending class. Hi, I'm Avi Anderson, and this is the Explorations Learning Network. If you remember our episode on e-learning platforms, we went over the elements that make it possible to take an online class, including having an internet connection, as well as using an internet browser, such as Microsoft Explorer, Firefox, Safari, or even Google Chrome. And in our episode, Getting Started, we talked about all the steps necessary to enroll in an online class. You may want to review the material in both these episodes if you're new to online education. In this episode, we're going to take an in-depth look at attending class and basically what you need to know for your first day at school. In order to talk about attending class, we need to review one of the major components of an e-learning platform, the e-learning portal. As you may remember, one of the most common e-learning portals being used today is Moodle. Moodle is an open source platform, a free software platform anyone may use, and is one of the oldest e-learning portals still in use. Moodle is an acronym for Modular Object Oriented Dynamic Learning Environment. Moodle and systems like Moodle are commonly referred to as Learning Management Systems, or LMS. Moodle isn't the only LMS out there. There are many learning management systems currently used by schools and private training providers to host online classes. Although it's not the oldest learning management system on the virtual planet, it launched back in August of 2002 and is still a great example of a typical LMS. But whether you're looking at Moodle, Blackboard, Canvas, or one of the many other learning management systems, you'll discover they all have a few things in common. Every LMS has a system to register and enroll students into classes. In some cases, this can be done automatically or can be handled by a registrar, a person or group of people who register you for a class. Some colleges and universities employ both methods. The registrar or advisor confirms that the class is appropriate for your needs and that all your questions will be answered before you begin the course. Some students who sign up and enroll in a course without input from an advisor or registrar may discover that the class does not meet their needs. In addition to an enrollment and registration system, every LMS has the ability to deliver learning content in a variety of formats, often referred to as multimedia, including text, graphics, and video. This multimedia content can be assembled and rapidly delivered to the student by instructional designers, subject matter experts, instructors, or teachers. Each of these individuals are familiar with the subject for the course and are experts at operating the learning management system. Finally, most learning management systems can deliver both small and large classes over the web and even personalize the learning experience for every student, including customizing the learning experience based upon your answers to quizzes, exams, and other activities. These competency-based learning systems, such as Acellus' Deficiency Diagnostic System, look for gaps or holes in the student's knowledge of the subject. The system then tailors the instruction to fill in the gaps. In addition to all these features, most learning management systems provide you with a way to communicate with your instructor and the other students in your class. We'll expand on these in a future episode, but usually you can send email messages, post in discussion boards, or converse in a chat room. So with all that in mind, what's the first day of school like in an online classroom? Well, once you're off the bus, oh wait, that's right, you're smart and you took online classes, so you won't even have to get on a bus. Okay, so the first step is getting online. This will require you to get onto your computer and open up an internet browser. 
Once your browser is open, you'll need to navigate to your student learning portal. The registrar at your school sent you a link to your online class. This link will take you to your student portal. Think of your student portal as the front door to your school. Of course, you have to be registered as a student to pass through the doorway. To enter the school, you're going to need your username and the password for your account. On the student portal, you'll see a section or link that allows you to log in. Enter your username and password in the fields provided. Remember, these words are often case sensitive. If you forgot your username or password, or if you have other problems logging in, don't worry. Most LMS systems have automated methods for reminding you about your password or providing a way to create a new password. Or if things get really bad, you can always contact the help desk. Once you successfully log in, whew, the next step is to find your class. Chances are the learning management system will provide you with a list of the courses you're enrolled in. If you've taken other classes in the same system, you may also see a list of classes that you've completed. Or maybe even a list of future classes you'll be taking. Once you find your current class, you'll need to click on the link that opens the door to the classroom. Keep in mind that there are many different types of online class experiences. However, they typically fall into two distinct categories, self-paced individualized courses and traditional online courses. Self-paced individualized courses provide students with an experience that usually does not include an instructor or other students. These courses, although designed by an expert in the subject matter, are operated by the learning management system in a format commonly referred to as computer-based learning. The LMS delivers the instruction through text, graphics, and video, and then assesses what you learn through quizzes, exams, and other activities. Computer-based learning is popular in corporate training and compliance-based training where you have to take a test to prove that you've learned the material in the class. Courses that teach you about sexual harassment policies and laws um, or the rules of the ride so you can pass a driver's exam are both examples of computer-based learning. Traditional online classes are similar in that they deliver instruction through multimedia and assessment activities. However, they also provide students with the opportunity to speak to an instructor and collaborate with other students in the course. Unlike computer-based learning, which is typically based upon a single point of view, these courses tend to provide you with a more diverse learning experience that allows you to interact through questions and dialogue. A couple of things to remember about attending class. Beware of being inactive during a class for too long. Although each school has its own policy regarding how much time, the maximum amount is usually about an hour. If you're inactive, you may be logged out. Don't worry, chances are any work you submitted during the time you were logged in was saved. Just remember, don't take off to the store or grandma's if you're still logged into your class. Be sure to save your work and log out of your class. Also, most schools require you to be responsible for getting online and attending class. Having a secure and consistent connection to the internet is important. If the power goes out or your connection goes down but the school is still operating the class, it's your responsibility to find a way to get online. This may require you to grab your laptop, put on something more than just your jammies, and run down to your local coffee shop with its free Wi-Fi. Don't stress though, what a great way to get out of the house and enjoy some space away from the kids, right? Or other distractions, all while enjoying a great cup of coffee or delicious tea. Okay, it's time for school. Better get to class. Until next time. The Explorations Learning Network is a production of Clark College and is sponsored through generous donations and the support of students and faculty. Mark Gaither is our producer and director, and this episode was sponsored through a Department of Labor grant administered by the Washington State Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board. 
The Workforce Training and Education Coordinating Board is a partnership of labor, business, and government dedicated to helping Washington residents obtain and succeed in family wage jobs while meeting employers' needs for skilled workers. I'm Aviance Anderson for the Explorations Learning Network, advancing learning for the information age.